Welcome everybody, and while I'm here, thank you for the World Forestry Institute and the Hurley, Harry Merla Foundation for this uh, opportunity of six months. And this is the result. I'm going to uh, present a little bit of what I've learned in a comparison uh, on forestry policies, practices uh, between the PNW and, the, um, and Europe, north of Europe where I work. And this is the house where I'm born in, uh, right on top. It's built uh, by the grandfather of my grandfather and was finished in 1915. So how does it look like now? This is uh, the fourth and the fifth generation. In the middle is my dad. He is our woodworker of the family. On your left, uh, in uh, red, is my older brother. He is in charge of our uh, lumber side of the business. And I'm the one on the right in green, most of the time in green, uh, with a cap. And I'm responsible for our log side of the business. And as Shadi had mentioned, I'm a, a procurement forester. And I'm a procurement forester for more than only one sawmill, because that's the first uh, big difference between North of Europe and uh, the PNW. We don't have vertical integrated forestry industries. So landowners are separate, management or uh, foresters are separate, loggers are separate, truckers are separate, and I'm more or less in between. And my job simply put to uh, see some logs, try to buy them, and uh, transport them as fast as I can from the forest to the mills. And here there's a nice video which shows a landing, which I shot during my time when I was working with Westwood Logs, which is a big hardwood log exporter. And note there is a self-loading truck, which is different from here. Note that this is a skid road, and you can only drive on the skid road. And note that there is a continuous, uh, continuous forestry cover, which is also a little bit different. We'll see that later. So, you know my family and what I do, where do I do that? I am from the Netherlands, and I work in Germany, in the Netherlands itself, of course, Belgium and of France. The Netherlands is a country with 17 million people, and we live in more or less uh, twice the area of the Willamette Valley. So it's really cramped up, uh, just like the Asian countries, that's why we look alike. And, um, <laughs> The area, to show you the forest area, it's almost nothing. We depleted that resource a long time ago, and we are a nation of, um, of trading. And we trade through via the Koopman Domine principle, which is translated into a merchant reverend um, principle. So we sell everything if we can make money on it, and afterwards we're going to tell you how to live your life. A better person. <laughs> And uh, we are straightforward and direct. I think that everybody who has hosted me or uh, us as a fellows that know that I will straightforwardly direct and we have, a, we have an opinion about, about everything. <laughs> and with that in mind, I wanted to focus uh, a little bit on how do people do their jobs, which is my job, but then in their part of the world. And I, I hoped to, to take out a, um, I wanted to zoom in on a, a logging system or an operational solution that I could bring back home. And I wanted to make a thorough comparison. So I tried all these sources, but my emphasis was on expert input because the experts more or less know how to comply with rules and regulations and practices or how to work around them. And I traveled extensively. I've met all the people, uh, all the places in green I've been, the, gre the blue bots I deemed interesting enough to um, go and talk to. And I think that I uh, easily uh, traveled over 10,000 miles in these six months. So I started off with policy. How does that look like? And I mean policy in, in one word. I thought it would be only one policy, but there's a lot of policies here. <laughs> And I'm not going to go over this, there are some missing in there, but what I wanted to take out of here is that there's even multiple layers. So you have the federal, state le level, or the federal level and the state level, which makes it a little bit weirder. They don't necessarily mean to complement each other, they can also conflict. And what is funny to see for me is that it's, they differ across land ownerships. For us, uh, everything has the same law, it doesn't matter who you are or what you own or anything else. So that's a, a big comparison, big difference, sorry. So I wanted to look at some practices. 
and how do they look? How do they look like? And I found that there is a nice um, international comparison study, and they derive five critical forest practices, which is a riparian zone, which is around streams. You have road buildings, the sizes of clear cuts, reforestation uh, policies, and an annual allowable cut. And the funny thing is, we, we don't have any of, the, any of those. And I've met, uh, uh, I have two arrows here that I want to talk about in my comparison in between, is that in the PNW, the policy system is pre prescriptive. So if I'll take the riparian zone, there is buffers here, the, um, uh, the amount of um, basal area, does it mean that how much timber can be in a riparian zone? We don't have that. We just have a simple uh, preclusive line which says don't destroy a riparian area. Doesn't say what it means, what it is, how big it is, doesn't. And that's a funny thing. And there is a comparison that there here you have sanctions. So if you don't reforest, you will get a penalty. So you will get a money uh, sanction. We have tax incentives, so if you are, um, need to reforest and you don't meet, uh, let's say, the five uh, years threshold of replanting it, you will not receive any tax benefits or you will not receive any um, technical support from government, for instance. And it boils down to that in the PNW there's a tree farm system, so most of the stuff that you, um, the factors that are helping growing a tree here has come from external sources. And we have a close to nature, which is arguable, but we use um, national processes to do our forestry and to do our civic cultural practices. And what I think is a nice way to sum up the differences between the PNW and north of Europe is that here, uh, 100 miles is short and 100 years is long, as whereas I'm from, 100 miles is very long and 100 years is very short. So we've looked at some policies and some practices and how do these practices look like in, in real life? That is more or less my part and my job. As this is an overview of the logging systems and I wanted to focus about two. So there's a skyline system and there's a ground-based system. And how does that look like? And this is a skyline system. So here you see the skyline. This is the f these are the five forest practices. So this is the road the riparian zone, the clear-cut area, and the reforestation area. And note, please, my uh, little movie clip in the beginning. We don't have clear-cuts in these types of sites, so you will not find this. And how does a ground-based operation look like? That is this. On the left side, you'll see a dozer, and on the right side, you see a yarder, which is in a clear-cut and a thinning. But we have a skid road instead of um, driving all over the forest floor, which is uh, very impossible for us. And the yarder, we also don't have that piece of equipment. Uh, it's used for a lot of things, but one of them is uh, loading and unloading uh, trucks. And you've seen in my clip that we have a self-loading truck, so we don't need an extra piece of equipment. So we've seen the policies, we've seen practice, and we've seen how that looked like. And what does that more or less um, means for me and my business. And the most important one is I'm not an office person. That is what I've learned during my time here. Although <laughs> I traveled 10,000 miles and I've seen a lot of stuff, I thought it was still too much in an uh, office and I would just like to work outside and do stuff. And what is funny, instead of zooming in on a specific logging system that I wanted to take home, I more or less did the opposites, as I found a lot of opposites. I was zooming out, and I found out that uh, my education and my uh, background and experience and concepts make me uh, look at things and um, tackle certain solutions. And here there is a unique multi-layered uh, uh, policy going on. And the op operations are specific um, dynamic out of the whole uh, equation, which is interesting. And although for me, it was pretty, sometimes pretty difficult to see the forest for the trees, uh, but I think it is about those trees and not about the stand. These trees provide me to find a, a solution rather than me coming back home or coming to the PNW and taking a solution that fits out and comes to, that I could take back home that, because there is no one-size solution. And although I didn't find that uh, solution, 
I found uh, lifelong friends and uh, valuable industry uh, in the connections and I want to thank you very much for your attention.